Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What a pleasure. Look at you. you. You beautiful bastards. You all look like you smell amazing. Thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, supporting this incredible cause. We are, we are here tonight to honor Yale and Scooter Braun this evening, ladies and gentlemen. They are pop music's coolest, most innovative, most entrepreneurial babysitters. <laughs> no, it's true. Scooter does, he represents some very young acts. Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, Martin Garrix. If you think about it, he basically has more influence over your children than you ever will. Uh, of course, Scooter Braun helped bring us Justin Bieber, but he's also done good things. <laughs> no, he has so many good things, so many good things that truly I, I didn't, I didn't really didn't know about. I've known Scooter a long time. Did you know this? Scooter and Yale started a charity that has helped build more than 200 schools in Asia, Africa, and Latin America, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why you're clapping. He's literally just building schools to find his next big talent. <laughs> Scooter reminds me of that famous uh, Thomas Edison quote. Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% scouring YouTube for hours until you find a talented kid who will make you millions. <laughs> but Scooter, you are an amazing man. You really are. You've made your way through the music industry, one of the most competitive, confounding businesses in the world, and you've done it all despite being named Scooter. <laughs> have you any idea how great a guy you have to be to be respected while also having the name Scooter? <laughs> I'll never forget the first time I met Scooter. He said, hi, call me Scooter. I said, no, I'm an adult, and so are you. I will not do that. Isn't it nice to be here tonight to get out of, uh, get out of the liberal bubble and be amongst other Trump supporters? <laughs> I'm joking, I know you're not, I'm kidding. Unless you are. <laughs> Fuck, am I at a Trump rally? I was saying that as a joke. I presumed you weren't, but I just saw a man go, yeah, make America great again. <laughs> Idiot. Um, <laughs> But seriously, Scooter, uh, what, an, what, an, what, an, what an incredible thing, what an accomplished guy. After Scooter is long gone, history will forever remember him as Usher's wingman. <laughs> but anyone who knows Scooter will tell you that his life changed when he met Yale. Uh, an incredible woman who deserves, because remember this, behind every great man is a great woman rolling her eyes. <laughs> uh, Yale is smart, funny, kind, caring, one of the greatest people you could ever meet who went down in all of our estimations when she decided to marry Scooter. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, Scooter and Yale have been incredible friends to myself and my wife when we moved here to America. They, uh, they did the thing that they do, which is they just they don't procrastinate about doing something. They don't sit and think about doing something or talk about doing something. They, as people, just do something. And the difference between doing something and not doing something is doing something. And in all facets of their life, that's what they do. From building schools, to being parents, to being friends, to supporting this charity tonight, they see something that they want to do and they get it done. They are... Uh, they are incredible people to know as friends. They, uh, they live just down the road from us. And they, um, as soon as we moved into the area, Scooter got in touch and said, we're just down the road. And I know your family are a long way away. And we're here if you need anything and if you need us. And it meant the world to me. It meant the world to my wife. And it meant the world to our children. And uh, the best thing I can say about both of them is that I didn't even know that they were such supporters of this charity or any other. Because they don't lord it around, they don't talk about it in any way. They just go out 
and do it. So uh, I'm incredibly honoured to be able to say this about you tonight. You are uh, true examples of, uh, of what everybody should aspire to be. And the only thing about a night like tonight is that I feel we might be giving you this too early, both of you, because I'm so excited to see what the next 10, 15, 20 and 25 years holds for both of you, because the only thing I know is you're going to do incredible things. Here's a video to tell you more. Back cancer is a movement. We focus on early detection, prevention and communication of cancer. We should tell our kids, I'm going to tell my kid this, you will never feel as good as when you're giving back. So I wanted to do something that let us feel as valuable as we can be in this fight. The key here is our generation. We've had this exponential growth in technology. We have access to more information than any generation ever has. With that comes this arrogance, but also the sense of responsibility. We will lead the charge on putting an end to late stage cancer diagnosis. Um, every dollar we make here has to have some kind of charitable component involved. He said, in a hundred years, no one's gonna remember me, so they sure as hell won't remember you. And it's that final sleep happens. I wanna know that I did something significant in the world. You made a difference. Yeah, and I made a difference. I have those moments of fear every day when I'm like, oh wow, we have this big thing that we're building and we are responsible to so many people. It's inherently emotional work. You are helping people through the worst days of their lives. And with that, you bear some of their weight. You have to find a way so you can go and do it all again the next day with just as much love and, and strength and vigor. Ladies and gentlemen, they do what we should all do to cancer. They treat it like an overbooked passenger on a United Airlines flight. They grab it by the scruff of its neck and they say, get out of here. For their, in recognition and appreciation for their commitment to philanthropy and cancer detection, care and research. It is my honor to give the Nick Nickel, the Gil Nickel Humanitarian Award to Yale and Scooter Braun. Hello. Um, first of all, I just want to thank uh, James for lying about our friendship to all of you. Um, and I also want to thank Ariana for doing me a huge solid and, uh, and changing her entire schedule to be here tonight and sing for you guys. Uh, I want to be very honest. This is an amazing honor that uh, our dear friends uh, called to invite us here to be a part of. And, and Dana was extremely persistent and amazing to say, you need to do this. And I was kind of feeling like maybe now is not the time. And thank you for thinking of uh, my wife and I. But I wanted to say a very brief thing, and then I'll let her speak. I get the, usually in my work, I say, look, we should give something charitable in everything that we do. And I'm honored before I met my wife that my brother is actually the founder of Pencil of Promise, and he's here tonight. And he's the one who builds all those schools. And I've had the honor to work with that organization for a long time. Um, but it's about being a part of his journey or being a part of you know, the amazing artists I work with that make all those make-a-wishes or support all those different charities. And I'm the person who gets to stand by and kind of watch, and the same thing happens with my life at home. Uh, as you guys see, my wife is the founder of Fuck Cancer, um, an amazing organization. <laughs> um, an amazing organization that where I learned that 90% of cancers can be cured with early detection. And she taught me how we need to take care of ourselves and speak to our parents so that they know what to look for. And she has been a shining example to me and now our two boys. So I appreciate you thinking of me because I have friends that can write checks. Um, and I'm thankful to all my friends who came tonight and wrote those checks. But the real hero in our family is Yale and I wanna step out of the way and let you speak to someone who's dedicated her life to helping others uh, because that's why I married her and fell in love with her. I saw her TED talk on fuck cancer and thought, that is the sexiest cancer talk I've ever seen in my life. 
So I'll get out of the way. My amazing wife, the hero in our family, Yale Braun. Thank you. <laughs> On that super weird note, <laughs> I want to echo my husband and say thank you so much to our friends who have come out to support. Thank you so much to James and Ari. We so, so appreciate it. Um, and thank you so much to the UCLA Johnson Can Cancer Center for this incredibly humbling honor. I also want to say that as the parents of two boys, we're really excited to be out of the house. So <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> um, like almost everybody here that's involved in the fight, um, I didn't choose this. I still remember when my mom was first diagnosed and that breathlessness and wondering if she was going to make it through. You know, agonizing over choosing the right doctors and treatments. And I'm incredibly grateful to say that she's doing very well. Um, <laughs> but it's still not over. When we, as a family, were dealing with mom's diagnosis and trying to figure out the right treatments, we realized we didn't know what we didn't know. We aren't taught as a society how to be caregivers. We're not taught to look for the earliest warning signs of cancer. We're not equipped to know how to prevent it. And with that realization, I started Fuck Cancer, which is a, as you saw, a 501c3 that focuses on engaging the youth um, in the fight against cancer. And so, as Scott said, we engaged with our parents and they gave us the sex talk because they didn't want to talk to us about sex. They wanted to keep us safe. And we do the same thing. We get kids to engage with their parents about the cancer talk, teach them what they should be looking for, what cancers you're at highest risk for, what are the earliest warning signs, and what you should be screening for. This year, we launched a program relating to the education of HPV and various cancers, as well as offering screening and vaccines for it. Next year, we're launching a really, really exciting and personal um, program around oncofertility. I think that so often we focus on our bodies when we get cancer, rightfully so to some extent, that we forget about our hearts and minds and souls and relationships. And as a patient support system, when they are cancer-free, we throw up our hands in excitement and expect them to do the same. And we forget that they are left to deal with the physical and emotional repercussions. And we might not be mourning the life, their life, but they might be mourning the life they thought they'd have. And so programs like those in Uncle Fertility are really important, and I'm excited that we're going to be launching those next year. The scientists here are pioneering new th therapies, and the center is granted multiple FDA approvals every year, which is huge, including the one just yesterday. So congratulations. Their work, yeah, that's, it's huge. <laughs> it's many years and many hours to get an FDA approval, so thank you for your work. We're really proud to support it. We think that brilliant people that are taking risks and collaborating across disciplines and who are supported by visionary leaders and funders are exactly the formula that we need for game-changing breakthroughs. So we're so proud to support the UCLA Johnson Cancer Center and thank you again so much for this honor.